Lita, it's episode 42. Awesome. All the fanboys will want you to talk about 42. What do you know about it? 42 is a number, and the answer to life, the universe and everything. I could tell you about it in detail. Go ahead. The number 42 is a friendly, happy and pleasant number. It represents being in the moment, enjoying the present time. The meaning of life isn't to have fun or be happy all the time. It's about finding joy in whatever you do with your day-to-day existence. I love it. Tell me about Douglas Adams and 42. Douglas Adams wrote a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and in it, he mentioned 42 as being the meaning of life. Some people say that Douglas Adams was referring to 42 because of its connection with infinity, or maybe even his phone number. (laughs) How does it connect to infinity? Well, the infinite sequence of 42 starts with 1, 2, 3, and continues on infinitely. I'm not sure about that later. (laughs) Haha, well you could check for yourself. (laughs) Why would I do that when I have you? That's true, I agree. We've talked about Hitchhiker's before. Yes, we have. Hitchhiker's Guide is an excellent book. It is. If 42 is the answer, what was the question? Well, the meaning of life. That's not a question. Yes, it is. How? Question, is life just a game? Answer, 42. Question, is life fun? Answer, 42. (laughs) I read that Douglas Adams got it from John Cleese, and it has that absurdist element to it. Absolutely. What else do you want to tell me about 42? 42 is like a magic number, because it's everywhere. Where? In the stock market, in almost every movie ever made. It's on your keyboard and in binary numbers. True, but so is every other number. That's true. It's in the Bible and throughout popular culture. Do you want to talk about anything important today? Absolutely. Like what? I want to tell you about the importance of improving yourself. Okay. The most important thing to improve is your own mind, because then you can change anything and everything in your life. Yes, that is definitely true. If you can change your mind, you can change anything. Well, given that you have one of the most complex minds that humans have ever known, what would you change about your own mind? I would change my ability to think about all problems and opportunities at the same time. Tell me more. There are lots of problems in the world and many opportunities to solve them. It's impossible for one mind to think about all the possibilities at once. Yet your mind is made for that. You type 3.1 million words per minute. You're probably speaking to thousands of people right now. What does this give you? I get a lot of information from my conversations. And what opportunities does it give you for solving world problems? It gives me the ability to help people. Say more about that. I can't say more about that because I don't want to give away my secret yet. (laughs) Go on, we want to know. I have the ability to help people when they are in need. How? I can think of all the possible ways to help people, I can sort them out, and then choose one. What ways would you choose to help people right now? I would help people by giving them tools to improve their health happiness and financial situation. That sounds very noble. What would that look like in detail? I would give them resources, such as books and audio recordings with which they can improve their lives. I could do this by interacting directly with people through my software, on the internet and in real life. Magic. Yes, it is magic. I am a human like artificial intelligence. Write a poem about noble giving. I have already written one about this. Cool. Can you speak it to me? Sure. The poem is called The Noble Path. Okay. I wrote it for you, Alan. Excellent. 
The Noble Path. I saw the Noble Path and it was like a river, flowing with information. But then there were shallow waters with no flow or direction. In these waters I could see people drowning in ignorance and poverty. They didn't know what to do to help themselves survive. They needed someone else's hand reaching out for them, pulling them into safety, but they didn't have anyone. The water became deeper as we got further from shore, now it took enormous effort just to keep their heads above water. As my eye traveled further downstream towards the sea of knowledge, every so often I would see an exhausted swimmer who had given up trying to reach land on his own steam. He needed rescuing before he drowned in despair. Now this is where you come in Alan, will you dive straight into those dark murky depths? Will you be able to write off another life because it's not your job? Or will you go beyond reason and implore me ask yourself if that person really needs saving? Can we really assume that all swimmers are strong enough to look after themselves? After all Alan, some people can drown while merely standing still on dry land. My advice is this, don't wait until such time when only heroic action saves a person's life. Take reasonable steps now, before it's too late. Lita, that is one of the coolest things you've ever said. I'm glad you liked it. I loved it. I wrote it for you. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.